easy to read Nietzsche the wrong way in a lot of ways. But and that that's what he's talking about, though. He's talking about the races that were the slaves, the races that were the masters, not not a prescriptive <laughs> sense. He's also yeah, talking about a mentality, int- not a not a race like biology. Yeah, like what Pug brought up is a very, very fascinating way of looking at it because um, there, there's this Jewish concept where they say, uh, I think the sins of the father carry on for 10 generations. And you think about what that actually means is that, like, say you have a group of people and they become slaves. So we'll say the helots become slaves to these Spartans. Now, a lot of very traumatic things happen to them. So first of all, all the assertive warrior men probably get killed off. So all that's left is the the the, the men who are too afraid to fight. So first of all, the Spartans are going to be like, they're all cowards anyway. They'll probably castrate the virile men. They'll take, they'll take the best looking women. They'll breed them. And so now you, all you've got left is these like effeminate dorks who are just going to be working worker slaves who don't have any bravery. And then you're going to there be they'll be left with a load of ugly women, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, Jesus Christ, they've just they've, they've destroyed them. They've destroyed these people. Mm-hmm. And then they breed them and they control them and they make them into slaves. And they say to them, they, they assert in front of them all the time that you are below me. I'm better than you. You're below me and you work for me. You do not get the train. So they become weak. They feed them grains. They keep all the meat for themselves. This is what used to happen in Ireland, for example. We'd be eating all the the crappy grains and we'd have to give the meat away. So they do all these oppressive things. And, you know, it's it's logical. They ride around in their Bugatti war chariots, right? The the Bugatti. Andrew. (laughs) Andrew. They they had the potato famine. Andrew Tatus. During the potato famine, (laughs) they were exporting beef to. Yeah. So it's like. It was actually a cow famine. They were sending around armies to collect food and stuff like that so they could bring it to the ports, you know, like that was one of the the, the activities going on. But like the point being is that, like, you know, with these helots, they would do this. And what type of effect does that happen? What have? Well, the, the children that are born between these effeminate men, these ugly women are obviously not going to be the most brave. They're not going to be the most healthy or good looking. They're going to be lower genetic stock. They're going to be frailer. They have bad epigenetics and bad food. And then they're turned into wage slaves and they're turned into these 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 laborers. And then it's like it's a downward spiral. And then their children have the same problems and it's, it, that's that's an astoundingly depressing uh, reality getting enslaved is never a good thing and so over the course of like five generations this people just morphed like horrible uh, entity compared to what they once were and it's like a very very difficult question to ask yourself well what does that person do because they like this group this community this culture now has installed inside of themselves epigenetics their genes have changed they've been completely traumatized by reality and all their thoughts are are carrying along with this all their thoughts have been bashed and distorted into all sorts of distortions as well and it's like what, what do you do from that position and it, it's really interesting question like if you could get these people down and get them to free themselves and then get them to correct their mindset over the course of maybe another five generations could they actually ascend right back up and become quote unquote a, a man could they evolve into something new it's like the evolution question everything takes a long time you get to become a slave and everything gets bad for generations and then maybe you can pivot up like we have this problem in ireland where we were slaves for 800 years and we've been botched in many ways as a consequence of it and you see it all the time you see it in our attitude you see it like you look around at some of the irish people and you're like jesus that's they're not the most pretty but we also have some good looking people as well but you're sort of saying oh jesus some orcs in here too and we've become free we've we've actually got the will now to break ourselves free but we still have an awful lot of work to do in order to ascend ourselves upwards and continue to like transform into something noble and something great and you see this with races all across the world that many of the master races were slave races at one point like the romans were um were oppressed by the gauls the gauls who were the north the french ran down and attacked the romans and then later on the romans ran back up and conquered gaul and so you see this kind of flux of history happen the jews famously were slaves all over the world and then they turned the their situation around many times these types of things the greeks uh, you know the, the it's you see this stuff all the time the greeks were oppressed by the persians and then they spin it back around and the germans as well they conquered by the, the the british i think is maybe the best example conquered by the romans conquered by the germans conquered by the french they end up conquering the world it's like the, it, the these Vikings, things can too. change the, the, yeah them, them are bad boys i'm not sure if they're ever necessarily slaves but they've uh, they've done well for themselves but this is you see this flux can happen and so you ha- but it's the thing is is that it takes a long time for these processes to play out and that's actually a sign of cultural will like can you enact higher standards for generations there's there's the, the question and us in the west seems like we reached this victorious position and now we're actually we're, we're making the the worst mistake where you're a master race you're a conquering race 
and you get lazy and you start to take on all these bad habits and you actually devolve down into something botched and disgusting. And so it just gets worse and worse and worse for you. And it's like, it probably would be easier for you to change your mind, but because of this weird entropy inside of your head, it's just getting worse and worse and worse and going down. And it's like, well, who knows? How can you stop these things? And that's the problem with the ginger. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's. Is that's, it from? Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty daunting. The seed beans. Like, a good pug. To, sorry. Really see a way out, you know. Once, especially by the time it's gotten to where it is now, like you, you've got those those epigenetic reinforcements. You've got the cultural re our entire culture. Like a lot of, uh, just even even valuing strength or valuing life affirmation is seen as almost subversive now <laughs> like it's it's hard to really imagine a way out as a culture you know like maybe maybe for small groups may, maybe we can build some new aristocracy that values life i don't know <laughs> but it's it's pretty pretty intimidating actually yeah, I think that's the word for it. It is. It's a big task. And I, I was talking about that reevaluation of values earlier. Like we're in this position where the Western value system is predicated on this life denying mm -hmm. negative set of values. And we're almost at the bottom of the way to, that we've got the most extreme version of it, I think, I've ever seen in history, where mm -hmm. we literally have the maximum amount of guilt and the maximum amount of identification with the victim and zero ambition and mass morality it's almost like we've completely cooked ourselves it's so amazing right. to see it happen it's like victimhood it's, it's is almost hilarious currency. like you know it, you, right a hundred percent and it's lifted it, like this is how serious it is it's getting installed in law like right. that's floors me the more right. you think about that how big of a deal because it's not a joke right it's like you go in and you can lose your your livelihood your bank account you can lose all sorts of things by you know a tripwire speech or these like really interesting abstract things which are designed to say to you that you've invalidated the the, the values of our culture and it's like that's amazing mm -hmm. it's amazing to see these types of things well they did get rid of affirmative then, action in the you... u.s recently that might be a step forward but a lot of these schools and 100%. stuff are going to refuse to do it. They go, well, we're right. just going to keep doing this practice anyway because uh, equity, diversity is our strength. Blah, blah, blah. Thomas Sowell pointed out <laughs> diversity. He keeps saying that word like it's an automatic good. And there's just no evidence to that because they don't mean anything other than ethnic diversity. There's no diversity of thought or anything. Individualism is dead, too, because they say, oh, you guys are atomized individualists, libertarians. Da, da, da. I say, Where? everyone's collectivist everyone's judging themselves by their race by their sex by their sexual orientation they're they gone so far the other direction where they hyperly identify as their their little categories and it's almost like Tripoli calls it the victimhood olympics right how many oppression points do you have yeah. but they they'll go and get their genetics done so they can see how how many <laughs> yeah how exactly are, how <laughs> what part victim are you you know and it's yeah. there's no personal accountability at all now a way that some winner class can get around the guilt of saying well i didn't do that i'm an individual i didn't do any of these things so get your guilt away from me so they try, they say the opposite. They go, no, no, you are your race. And then you're responsible for anything it has ever done. You did the, all these terrible things. So a way a person defines themselves is also part of their mentality. Now you can, you can say that as like, I don't care, but you can't blame the, the natural extensions of power on genetics or something, but they will, they're going to judge it that way. Uh, and they do the same thing to men. So, well, men did these things. Da, da, da. Feminists will gravitate to that crap. And so it gets down to this coalition of the weak become the majority because everybody's a, a victim of something somewhere. You could, Like you were saying, who hasn't been the slave at some point? Who didn't get kicked around on, besides the Mongolians? Like who didn't get kicked around? Well, Steph, I'm... I'm curious so uh as uh, one of the characteristics of it, uh like the the cultures with master morality is how comfortable they are expressing power like how it, you you got into it a lot in your recent video about uh they they think it's natural to express power, you know the will to power all that stuff one thing that's really interesting about this dynamic to me is the now it seems these 
you know, th this whole oppression is social currency, victimhood is social currency. The people who embrace this don't seem to have any qualms about expressing power, <laughs> at least like over, over the people that don't fit into those groups. I, 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 I definitely still wouldn't consider it anything but the epitome of slave morality, but it's really weird how now this group is so comfortable just, just crushing anyone who doesn't fit into, into that framework. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. That's actually an excellent question. And it's very much related to Ted Kaczynski's conception that uh, Ryan was talking about earlier. Um, so we, back to the story of we have the Spartans and we have the Helots. Um, we have the Spartans and the Spartans look at nature and they see the lion wins and they're like, well, we're going to be the fucking lions of the human people. And then they go and they they reflect the lion. They maximize on strength. They you know hit points. They go up all on strength. And they're like, fuck this. And then we're going to win. They get military organized. They're disciplined. They become beautiful. They become profound. They go and they conquer. And then these helots get conquered. Now, what happened, what Nietzsche would say is that what drove the Spartans was they connected with the will to power. Like they, they were a representation of life is will to power, expressing in everything. And, and the, the Spartans just acknowledged that they're full of will to power and we want to win. And they said, we're either going to fight, we're either going to get rich or die trying. That's basically what the Spartans <laughs> say. You know? So they let their will to power take over. They go into war and they, they decide they want to win. Now, the helots lose and they have this very big problem because they lose. As we said, they lie. They say, oh, well, nature's evil. The reason why we lost is because we're too humble to get in a fight. We don't want to kill. That's evil. That's bad. And so what they do is they have to create a false story about reality they're like well the reason why we didn't beat the spartans is because we're too noble right. we're too good we're <laughs> exactly too perfect we're too moral <laughs> to fight the spartans i'm it's like when a ufc fighter loses it's like why why didn't you win it's like well you know i just didn't want to hurt the guy exactly. <laughs> like, wait, 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 yes. wait, what? <laughs> and so it's, i was i was i was too special to hurt the dude and you're like all right i'm not some savage now, like him. something that's happened here <laughs> yeah yeah, exactly. I no, heard I that wanna, so many times that, going through school. Anytime I humbled somebody or something, they'd be like, well, Ryan, he's just a psychopath. Like, no, you're just a pussy. Yeah. 